win in front of a terrific home crowd. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. On the floor right now for the Mavericks. Terry is out there with J.J. Barea. Then there's Marion, and it's Chandler, and it's Butler in at the three, the small forward. The back of the Mavs, that home crowd, they also have another guy who's pretty important in that audience. That's their <laughs> owner. You know, Steve, he's watching every game in Dallas. <laughs> yeah, from right behind the bench, too. And that's something that the team has grown accustomed to. And uh, Mark Cuban has been a terrific owner for the Mavericks. He's turned that franchise around, and he's really a, a major part of their culture. Stolen by Terry. Mavericks leading by eight. Okay, well, let's check in with Doris Burke reporting from our sideline in this game. Doris, take it away. Kevin, for Tyson Chandler, in the span of a year, he won both a gold medal and an NBA championship. And Chandler thinks that one helped lead to the other. I've always been a passionate guy, he said. But being a vocal guy for Team USA and seeing guys responding to what I was saying, I felt like... This is on the biggest level you can possibly be on. I don't think if I hadn't had that Team USA experience that I would have been as vocal and successful here with the match. Guys? All right, Doris. Well, that's how it is. I mean, one great achievement builds confidence for the next. And a fantastic run for Tyson Chandler. And Dallas calls their first time out of the game. Well, the big story, of course, a year ago for Miami was the formation of the big three, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. And although it took some time for those three to click, eventually they figured it out. Looking at who's out there now for the Mavericks. Dirk Nowitzki, he's checked in for Butler. Fernandez comes in for Jason Terry. And Jason Kidd has subbed in for J.J. Barea. Marion backing down. And the layup falls. Marion's got his second bucket of the night. Steve, back to what you said about Miami. They struggled out of the gate. They were 9-8, and eight, but after a rough November, they kicked it on in December. And Clark, I think really the game that kind of spun them around was their first LeBron appearance in Cleveland in a win early December against the Cavs. Yeah, that was an impressive win. I recall that that was almost like an NBA Finals type atmosphere in terms sure of the was. media attention and so forth. Um, but in that month, they went 15-1 and one and really seemed to find their rhythm and quite honestly never look back you got to wonder has miami set off a bit of an arms race in regards to talent with what they were able to pull off last year Are other teams going to look to snack stars just to try to keep up house gets called for the reach that's foul number two for him here's Nowitzki, still looking to get on the scoreboard and stolen by howard the heat trail by seven Here's LeBron, and he finishes at the rack. Kevin, his scoring ability is valuable, really valuable. I mean, he's a guy you can rely on to knock down shots. Mark, you brought up the stars wanting to play with each other. You know, Steve, it, it seems like that is the trend now in the NBA. Well, I think every player wants to play with, with great players. And it's all circumstantial, really. If, if you're a free agent and you know, there's a team with cap room and you've got a... Uh, partner who you want to play with and you can work it all out like Miami did, then that's great. But I think those circumstances are going to be few and far between. Here is House after Dirk Nowitzki's bucket. House kicks to LeBron. Six to shoot. Let's it go from deep. Gets it to go. LeBron's now got seven points. He didn't get off to much of a start early on, but he seems to have shaken off the rust here in the quarter. Now, there were questions about how LeBron would play in a new jersey. Statistically, he was about the same with the drop in points and a higher field goal percentage. He's a brilliant player no matter what uniform he's got on. Now, here's Nowitzki. Again, the Mavericks score. What a great little run he's on here in the quarter. Here is House. He's covered by Kidd. Here's Anthony. Again, the Heat, good for two. We're talking more about LeBron's stats. You're all over it, Clark. Steals, assists, blocks, rebounds. All look the same way they did in his last year with Cleveland. I guess, Steve, the difference is he played with another superstar. In fact, two if you put Bosch in there, and it was something that he was really aiming for, and it paid off. Yeah, he, he was never, LeBron was never concerned about numbers. It's always been about winning, and I think he wanted to find uh, some teammates that he could pair up with. And, Give him credit. I mean, he found a great spot in Miami. He's got a lot of talent around him. 
the numbers will always be there, uh, but the big thing is winning, and he just wants to win rings, and that's why he made his choice. He feeds it to Fernandez from past the arc. Offensive rebound. Whoa! Here's a second look with the Sprite Slam Cam. Come on now, I didn't see. You, can you believe that finish? <laughs> Boy, a little bit of flair and flavor at the end of it. Oh, that'll be a fan favorite, yeah, all right. That was not your average typical dunk. Fires at the elbow. Here's Anthony. Lays it in without an inch of room around him. Anthony's got five points now in the quarter. They started the game off tortoise-like, but their offense coming to life. Tortoise-like? Wow, Clark. Yeah, they're putting it together, but still trailing. Their offense is finally getting some traction. And that one's good. Well, so after a slow first quarter, he's starting to pick it up a bit here. The Heat trail by nine. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game. Now here's Wade. Looking for his first bucket of the game. Here's the dish to house. From deep three-point range, Wade gets the bucket. Now they're finally starting to shoot the ball a little bit better now. You know, I thought this was the play, the kind of play they needed in the first quarter, but as I always like to say, it's better late than never. Now here's Kidd. Novitski for three. Can't hit. The clock runs out, and we're heading to halftime. And we'll get going after this from the American Airlines Center. It's Thursday night action in the NBA. Welcome, everyone. Let's get right into our HP halftime report. For the Dallas Mavericks, they have the lead against Miami. And we return you to NBA action here at Great View of Victory Park and the American Airlines Center here in Big D. Here's LeBron on the four for Miami. LeBron and Bosch are the three and the four. Chalmers and Wade are the one and the two. And it's Anthony in at the center. Going out the middle. You know, last year for Dirk might have been one of his best to date. I mean, I think it was even better than his MVP year. He was just superb, but a lot of that had to do with what he showed in the playoff. I think he was at such a high level of performance during the playoff. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Well, Kevin, one of the staples of the Heat's success last season was their defense. LeBron said, We start with defense, and if we get stops, then it's open court for us. Perhaps the biggest part of their success was their intensity and athleticism on the defensive end turning into transition points on the offensive end. They are fearsome on the break, guys. Back to you. All right, Doris. Make no mistake about it. They were an incredible team on defense last season. Yeah, no question about that. They finally uh, were, were broken in that final series against Dallas, but throughout the playoffs until the finals, Miami's defense was spectacular. Here's Butler. Shot from the inbound. Wade with the defensive effort. 
Well, back to Dirk. He was in consideration for another MVP, Steve, finishing right in back of Rose last year. Well, he made a pretty good case for himself. He had best field goal percentage of his career and was a force for Dallas all season long. They had that incredible postseason run. And uh, if it hadn't been for an injury at midseason, which cost him uh, about 10 or 12 games, I believe, I, I think Dirk might have won it. Get against Wade. Here's Butler, takes it up. And it's Miami with the rebound. And they're struggling a little bit on the glass. They've got to pick up their physical play in the paint. Yeah, it's about being tougher and, and more physical, just as you said, Steve. If they can do that better, uh, they've got a chance to come back. Fellas, it's no secret that Dallas isn't afraid to spend or go into the luxury tax. But in their march to get better, they haven't been very careful with the contracts they've given out. They're struggling here. They're just one of five to start this third quarter. They've got to loosen up here. Here's Wade. Kid knocks it loose. They really need to start looking elsewhere, guys, because he can't get anything to go. That one goes. Countdown. Five points in the game. Seems like that finger roll just comes naturally to him. Great touch. Back to what you said about the Mavs, it seems they can't find the right center to fit them, and they keep giving out dubious contracts, and... Steve, and you know, as well as anybody being in the front office, and Clark, you too at the Pacers. I mean, it's 50-50 a lot of times. Yeah. You, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. you've got to manage those acorns. Steve? Yeah, the, the, the personnel decisions are always difficult, especially when it comes to big money deals. But I thought Tyson Chandler really solidified that center position for Dallas last year. Superb feed there, young fella. It really was. Perfect setup for the land. Right, he just managed to float the ball up there. And the official signal the backcourt violation. Not very careful there. A different look for Dallas. Haywood comes in for Chandler. And it's Terry in for Rudy Fernandez. And the Heat making a change here as well. Udonis Haslam. He's checked in for Joel Anthony. Got a piece of it. Here's Butler. Tough season last year for Karan Butler. He was playing so well before he went down with that torn patellar tendon. So hopefully he'll come back and have a strong season this year. Now here's Bosch. He's got five. Shot tonight. He may want to start spreading the ball around a little bit. His shot is off right now. Haywood with the ball. Working on Bosch. Haywood gets the bucket. Steve, that patella tendon injury really a major setback. I mean, Karan is one of the toughest players in the league and has been since he stepped foot in the NBA. If anybody can come back from that, I think he can. And LeBron James gets it to go. We've got 118 left to play in the third. Chalmers against Kidd. Defended by Chalmers. Shoots from the post. Shots good by Butler. Butler's got five points now this quarter. The lift they've gotten from him today has been huge. I mean, he's been steady offensively and has helped them get out in front here so far. And the Heat call time here. That's really played a lot of zone defense last year. I thought it worked out well for them, especially with the personnel they brought in. Tyson Chandler manning the paint really helped that club. And the Mavericks with some changes. Tyson Chandler is checked in for Nowitzki. And Berea subbed in for Jason Kidd. Juwan Howard's checked in for the Heat. Here's Wade. And he's back in business as a jumper finally drops for him. Wade's got five. Steve, back to Dallas. Sometimes a team needs to find an identity on defense. And they found that last year with the zone. That was a little clever trick, Clark Kellogg, that... Rick Carlisle, the coach of the Mavs, inserted in that team. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the zone, it fit their personnel. You can't overlook the um, impact that Tyson Chandler has had on their defensive disposition. Um, they, guys, they have guys that have length that can cause problems in the passing lane. So the zone defense just made some sense. So it's Miami now after the Mavericks pick up three. That's good. It's a good thing he showed up today because without him, this team would be in big trouble. Terry against Wade. And here's Berea. Six on the shot clock. 
Outside Terry. Good, and it's Perea who gets up the assist. Terry's got his second basket of the night. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. One of the stories here at Toronto, getting it done today.